thank you for joining this lesson. We're going to study the functioning of the ticker timer. The figure below shows the motion of a trolley on ticker timer. Then the ticker has a frequency of 100 hertz. Calculate the initial velocity between A and B. Therefore, between A and B, we already have the distance 0 0.5 centimeters. So the first thing to calculate is what we call the periodic time t, which is given by the reciprocal of the frequency. So the reciprocal of 100, which is going to be 0 0.01 second. Therefore, now that we have the periodic time, or rather the time from one dot to the other, and we have the distance from A to B, we can calculate velocity. So the velocity between A and B, initial velocity for this case, is going to be displacement, or rather distance, divided by time. So the distance is 0 0.5 centimeters, which has to be divided by 100 to change to to change to change SI units. So we're going to have 0 0.5 5 divided by 100 can be expressed as multiplied by 10 to the power of negative 2. Then we divide by time, which is going to be 0 0.01 seconds. Therefore, the velocity we'll be getting here now will be in meters per second. So 0 0.5, then we divide by 0 0.01. This is going to be 0 0.5 meters per second. So this one is the velocity between A and B. On the other side, we are also supposed to get the final velocity between C and D. The final velocity between C and D, which is again going to be given by the distance within a third gap. From C to D, we have 5 centimeters. When divided by 100 to make it as a unit, we get 0 0.05. Then now we divide by time. The time is again going to be 0 0.01 because it is the periodic time or rather the time from one dot to the next. 0 0.01. This is going to make 5 meters per second. Therefore, now we have final velocity and initial velocity. The last question is telling us on this part to calculate the acceleration of the trolley during the motion. Therefore, for us to get acceleration, we have to get final velocity minus initial velocity divided by the time taken. Now, when we get the diagram, we need to calculate the time taken. And this is how we get the time taken. We first of all calculate the complete dots or the complete gaps, sorry, the complete gaps between B and C, which are going to be 1, two, three. Then now, between A and B, the number of dots is only one. The number of gaps, sorry, or other spaces is only one. So we take one. Then between C and D, the number of spaces is only one. So now we get the spaces between C and D and that between A and B, and we take their average. So we have one space and one space on average we get one space because this is two divided by two. We get one space. Therefore, we have from this one, one space, then plus these complete spaces now, which is uh, one, two, three, plus the one now from these limits. So we'll be having a one, two, three, then the fourth one now. So we have four spaces, which means now the velocity is changing from 5, okay, from 0 0.5 to 5, within 0 0.01 seconds in 4 intervals. So this is going to give us 4.5, then we divide by 0 0.04. Now when we take um, 4.5, we divide with 0 0.04, this is going to give us 112 0.5 meters per second squared because this is acceleration now meters per second squared thank you for following subscribe and share